on our life's journey as we seek purpose and connection. We are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation program. I'm Sharon Rulier, filling in for Brother Terrence Scanlon, who is currently receiving treatment for a medical issue. He wishes he could be here, but has asked that you keep him in your prayers at this time. I know I speak for all of us in wishing him a speedy recovery. As we celebrate our Mass today, ask yourself, who is welcomed to our faith community, to our town, or to our country, and who's not? What we hear today from Isaiah, St. Paul, and Jesus can help us understand God's perspective on the matter. Each reading challenges us to break down walls that stand in the way of those who are excluded. In fact, in the Gospel, it is a foreign woman who persuades Jesus to break down the commonly accepted barriers of the day. I'm sure God's Word will challenge us today just as much as it did when it was written. On this 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are honored to be celebrating a very special Chalice of Salvation Mass requested by the deacons of our diocese. They have come in great number today to celebrate the upcoming retirement of Father Warren Savage, a longtime educator in the diaconate program and a friend to all, including here at Chalice. Father Warren will celebrate our liturgy today from St. Michael's Cathedral. Deacon Angel Perez will assist at the altar. Deacon Paul Briere will offer the homily. Deacon Steve Marcus will offer the prayers of the faithful. And Deacon Leo Coughlin will serve. Family, friends, and members of the Diaconate Program Board are joining us in the congregation and will be our readers. And our music ministry will be provided by Dave and Lise Letelier. As always, we send our best wishes to those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. We send our congratulations to Daniel and Evelyn Trella as they have much to celebrate. Parishioners of St. Mary's and Ware, the happy couple was married at that church 54 years ago on August 16th, which also happens to be Evelyn's birthday. Both Evelyn and Daniel are marking their 77th birthdays with Daniel's being this coming Thursday. We wish both of them the very best on all of these happy occasions. Also celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary are loyal Chalice viewers Ron and Jan Sizek. Congratulations and best wishes to you. 
and we are mindful of all those who are ill or homebound, especially our viewers who are watching this broadcast from their hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. Please know you're always in our prayers. As always, we will be placing the names that have been sent in to our Book of Remembrance. Included this week is the repose of the soul of Anne Martin, a longtime parishioner at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart in Springfield, and was also active in the Catholic Scouting Movement, and she passed away last Monday. We send our prayers to her husband, Bob, and son, Michael. May her soul and the souls of all our faithful departed rest in the peace of our risen Lord. We now join our music ministers for the opening hymn of gathering as we greet our celebrant, Father Warren Savage, and together celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We thank God for this beautiful day, for the gift of love and peace and compassion so needed in this fragile world. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. If you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love. 
so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry 
in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the tables of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Mass for the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time is a very special occasion. We recognize and honor our celebrant, Father Warren Savage, who continues to touch so many lives in his ministry throughout the diocese. Here today in the cathedral are many deacons and their wives from around the diocese gathered to thank Father Savage for his many years of involvement in the diaconate formation program and his support for and dedication to the diaconate. One of his primary roles in the formation and training of deacon candidates has been as a teacher of homiletics, the discipline and privilege of preaching. In that role, and speaking for myself and I'm sure all my brother deacons, 
He has not just taught us, but inspired us, motivated us, and very often challenged us to better serve the people of God in opening up the Word of God for all those we encounter in our ministry as deacons. One of the first things I remember learning from Father Savage in the first year of homiletic training is to preach with scripture in one hand and newspaper in the other. Today we'd say with media in the other. With that rule in mind, I considered how to approach today's somewhat puzzling gospel. And then I remembered an advertisement I once saw. It was for a cruise line promoting fancy vacations. At the end of the ad were the words, Princess Cruises, come back new. I don't know how many cruises that ad sold, but what it did do is provide, I think, a perfect lens to view today's gospel and really all of scripture. For what is it to encounter Jesus, the true and living Son of God, but to come back new from that experience? Today's gospel begins with Jesus crossing a boundary. Tyre and Sidon were pagan, Gentile territories. And worse than that, the ancestral home of the Canaanites, the idol-worshiping historic enemies of the people of Israel. But Jesus chose to travel there, only to find himself in an awkward and challenging situation. In that time and place, a woman alone would never speak to or confront a Jewish male in public. And worse, she was a Canaanite, and all of the prejudices of that time came to the surface. Being a woman, a Gentile pagan, part of the tribe of Israel's historic enemies, and someone with a demon in the family. And she was causing a public spectacle. This had to stop. Being men of their time, with all of the stereotypes and prejudices of the day, the disciples wanted her not just to be ignored, but sent away. But she was a mother on a desperate mission for her daughter. And so she crossed a boundary too, ignoring the rules. Have pity on me, Lord, son of David, she cries. Jesus' response that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, though, isn't directed to her, but to his disciples, almost as if he's confirming their prejudice. And certainly the Jesus that we see up to now in Matthew seems to have seen his mission as only to Israel. But the woman cries out again, Lord, help me. And in a way that perhaps puzzles us, Jesus responds using a common derogatory term for all Gentiles at that time. You can almost see the disciples nodding in agreement that their initial prejudiced reaction was seemingly being confirmed by Jesus. But this mother with a sick daughter, in a reply both clever and humble and respectful to Jesus, turns that cultural and offensive image into something else, a statement of faith, a declaration of hope, confronting Jesus to see her not as enemy, but as one of his own, sharing a common humanity, showing faith in him and a common desire of all parents for the health of their children. And Jesus, who has often called out his disciples for their little faith, calls her a woman of great faith, the only time in Matthew that Jesus says that about a person. With the curing of her daughter, the Canaanite mother comes back new from that experience with a restored child, her unshakable faith in Jesus, soothing the harshness of the scene. 
Hopefully the disciples have learned something new as well as Jesus' vision of his mission grows beyond their narrow prejudices. We all should come back new from this gospel story as Jesus challenges us to confront our own prejudices, our own sense of perhaps cultural or some other superiority. For as long as there are people in misery, people on the margins, people struggling with basic human needs, we are challenged to respond, challenged to cross our own boundaries too. And finally, I think coming back new very much describes anyone and all of us who have been fortunate to have Father Savage in their lives. In his ministry at Westfield State University, he touches lives in counseling, in supporting a staff of faith leaders from many traditions, promoting interfaith understanding, addressing student food insecurity, assisting students in crisis, and in many other ways through his own compassionate presence. And those of us in the diaconate family are surely different from having benefited benefited from Father Savage's dedication as teacher, mentor, inspiration, challenger, and friend, and as someone who has always worked hard to keep us in the God zone. Responding to both Jesus' example in the gospel and in honoring the role Father Savage has played in all our lives, may we always challenge our own boundaries as we work towards a world where adapting the words of the prophet Amos, compassion, mercy, understanding, forgiveness, love, and justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. We heard Jesus tell the woman of great faith, let it be done for you as you wish, with great faith. Let us offer our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers to the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hospitality, that our faith community may welcome all visitors as they did where Christ, through our liturgies, may help them draw closer to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our 
for all of those who have helped to strengthen our faith, for parents and teachers, and those who give witness by the fidelity of their life, that they may continue to be examples of Christian discipleship to all who encounter them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all people who have experienced prejudice, that God will heal their hearts and help them to continue to use their gifts and talents for God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For countries and peoples who are divided by religious belief, that the Spirit of God will bring about new opportunities for understanding and cooperation. Let us pray to the Lord. For refugees and immigrants, particularly those fleeing violence, that God will ease their suffering, guide them to safety, and stir their hearts of many to assist them. We pray to the Lord. For those recovering from hurricanes, wildfires, explosions, and other disasters, that God will ease their pain, give them strength, and renew their hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For students, particularly those who will be away from home for the first time, that God will help them learn, stay safe, and find the resources they need in assisting them in the coming months. We pray to the Lord. For peace and justice, that God will protect all those who are experiencing warfare and injustice, particularly the people of the Ukraine and Palestine and Syria, that they may live safely and care for their families. Let us pray to the Lord. For our dear Father Savage, that his retirement may be filled with peace, love, and steadiness that he has brought to so many deacons and friends throughout his years serving God and all others. Let us pray to the Lord. And we especially remember in prayer this day the names we will enter in today's Book of Remembrance. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you offer your love and mercy to all your children. As we grow in faith in you, may we realize your call to universal love, compassion, and mercy. Even as we seek yours to fulfill these prayers, we make through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Peace. 
sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love on agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours it may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your loving care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruit of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all who serve your people throughout this world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael the Archangel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, let us share with each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Love, love, you, buddy. love you. Love you too. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me try. 
turn and follow you and never be the same in your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Let us pray. <clears throat> Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to this image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As the opening colic prays, Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love. So my heart's been filled this day with the warmth of your love, your compassion, your service, your humility, your goodness. So I'm usually not lost for words, but I'm lost for words. <laughs> but the best preaching that I have seen it at a diocese, has been through the actions that you have performed for all the people. That's the best preaching. All the good works you do, that's the best preaching. All the outreach, all the moments you listen to people, all those troubled people that have come to you in your embrace of all those people, you have done a great job of preaching. So I want to thank you from the depth of my heart, reminding me three essential things that we must always do as baptized Christians. Believe what we read. Teach what we believe. And put into practice what we teach. I want to thank Deacon Paul for finally passing homiletics. He did a great job, and I want to thank my musicians, uh, Dave and Lise, all those who are responsible for this liturgy, Deacon Leo, Josie, all of you who came from north, south, east, and west to be here. My heart is deeply touched, and I know that we will continue to the best of our ability to share the most important gift of all. To all of God's people, whoever they are, we will share the gift of unconditional love with every single person we encounter. May that be our prayer and our mission through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.
gather in your presence we came to be one spirit and truth and name strengthened by the body my sincere thanks and congratulations to our celebrant father warren savage we all wish him a happy and restful retirement although i'm sure he'll be keeping himself very busy we also thank the deacons of the Diocese of Springfield for choosing to honor Father Savage here on Chalice. Special thank you to Deacon Leo Coughlin and Deacon David Picard for helping to plan this celebration. Our thanks as well to the Leteliers for sharing their musical talents with us today. We have all been moved by the devastation caused by the recent wildfires in Hawaii. Bishop Byrne has asked that our diocesan community respond to this crisis with prayers and financial assistance. We've created a link on diospringfield.org so that your donation can go directly to the Diocese of Honolulu. You can also make donations through your parish, make checks payable to your parish with Maui Relief in the memo line. Thank you so much for your consideration. And due to recent events, this Wednesday, August 23rd, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Parish in Springfield will host a prayer vigil and candlelight procession in response to the uptick in violence in Springfield and other communities here in Western Massachusetts. Bishop Byrne will take part in this prayerful and peaceful event, which will start at 7 p.m. at the church at 407 Boston Road here in Springfield. This event is open to the public and will follow the parish's 6 p.m. liturgy. All are invited to attend. And this coming Friday, August 25th, the Faith on Fire Catholic Rally will be taking place at Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills. The evening will feature talks by Bishop Byrne, Father David Alfaro, and Father Anthony Gromlich. This is in addition to praise and worship music, reconciliation, and a Eucharistic procession. Again, Faith on Fire is this Friday, August 25th, starting at 6 p.m. at Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills. And on Saturday, August 26th, St. Stanislaus Basilica in Chicopee is hosting an all-day festival in honor of Our Lady of Częstochowa, bringing together the Polish-American community in Western Massachusetts and celebrating their heritage and culture. Starting at noon, the festival will feature music and dancing and Polish-American food throughout the day and night. Bishop Byrne will celebrate a 4 p.m. outdoor mass and a candlelight procession with the icon of Our Lady will begin at 745 and will be followed by benediction. This free event is open to all, so please be sure to head out to St. Stanislaus Basilica, 566 Front Street in Chicopee this Saturday, August 26th. Sounds like it will be a great time. We ask you to tune in to Chalice of Salvation again next Sunday as Father Chris Malatesta of St. Agnes Parish in Dalton joins us again as our Mass Presider. Again, that's next Sunday at 10 a.m. for the Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. Thank you for letting me join you this morning. I again want to send my prayers to Brother Terry and ask you to do the same. Please know that you are always in our prayers as well. God bless and see you next Sunday. Due to NBC Sports coverage of Top 10 Football, Reel to Reel will be airing at 6.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings through November 19th. Set your DVR or join us Sunday mornings at 6.30. Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. 